Um, speak to us, Ryan, about the readiness for change for this church. Um, you've said in the past that the church was ready uh, as a result of the process. How did that affect you as a, a new pastor walking in, but also the staff uh, that you then had to create and you could share with them you know, that the church was ready? What's been the impact from that standpoint? Yeah, um, you know, speaking to the readiness of the people, um, you know, I was told all along, you know, everybody says they won't change until it's time to change. And so one of the good signs that, that God showed me coming in was, was small changes were already happening. So I didn't, you know, when I, when I was interviewing and, and, and meeting with people, um, they were asking, well, hey, Ryan, what are we going to change? Hey, what do you want to change? Hey, what do you think needs to change? And my honest answer was every time, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And the reason that I would say I don't know and I would tell them is, hey, I'm not there yet. I'm not on the ground yet. We're not together yet. And so a lot of things in theory, you kind of know, man, this probably is what's happening and what probably needs to be tweaked and changed and what needs to be done away with or what needs to be added, but you don't know until you're there. And so by God's grace, um, I didn't come in with this list of, well, here's what's going to happen. By God's grace, um, walked in, kind of took, you know, listened. I listened a lot coming in, um, although that my personality is let's go. But, but again, I listened a lot and thank the Lord for that. Um, and then from listening, seeing, going, yes, okay, yep, this is one, yes, yes, or okay, well, that they're actually already starting to do this here. So again, what happened, what, what I saw happen was there was already an awareness of we need to change, but what needs to change? So you guys were very, I think, instrumental, not in just helping them see, yes, there needs to be change, but also begin to get glimpses of what could and should be changed. And so that was super helpful um, coming in that they already had some of the lingo, some of the ideas, some of the understanding that was out there to, uh, of change. So. You know, the deacons were mm -hmm. very invested right. in the strategic envisioning process. Yeah. Uh, some were key leaders mm -hmm. uh, right. and some are still here That's right. uh, as uh, leaders. Uh, they're committed, you know, the amount of time they're committed to this mm -hmm. and have, have been committed to right. the change process or transformation as we like right. to call it. That's good, yeah. Uh, the, how much uh, did that you know, training, if you will, yeah. help the leadership here, yeah. uh, not just the congregation, sure. not that they're not important. No, course. yeah. Well, well, it, it's, you know, it's leadership at the end of the day. Somebody's got to lead the charge, you know. And so, but if you think of the average deacon or leader within the church, there's not a lot of training probably that they've been given on changing all most guys and women who lead in the church know to do is what they've been taught or shown within the church. And so having a group come in from outside going, hey, it kind of opens up a whole new realm of a reality of, man, I've never thought about that. Or, oh, I thought this is the way everybody did it. And you realize, well, no, everybody doesn't do it this way. And as a matter of fact, that's probably not even effective anymore, you know. And, and so helping them understand that. So then when your leaders get that, who have the interest of the church as a whole, you know, in, in their heart, but also have, if you will, they have that buy-in from Correct. the people. So when the leaders get it, the people get it. And it can't be either or. Again, it's got to be a both and deal. And so when you see light bulbs start coming on in their head, which, which obviously happened, you know, um, for some it'll take longer. It's a longer process. Right. For others, it's a quick deal. Like, that's what I've been thinking about the whole time. So um, I think prepping the leadership, whatever structure that is in, in the body there at the time here, it was, it was deacons um, and, and the staff that they had there. And um, so getting and them ready was There were was some key. also lay leaders yeah, that absolutely. were involved in the process. Yeah, so. so you always have leaders that quote unquote don't have the title, but they're leaders. So absolutely. so you get them in on the process as well. And that that was just awesome. I love the way I think there may have been 21, 20 something we're 21. Mm -hmm. of the group y'all had there, um, which seems like an, an enormous group, especially with churches that's running 80, right? But you think that's a quarter of the church. Well, that's awesome because if you can get a quarter of the people trained 
bought in, understanding, seeing the ideas, praying, seeking the Lord. Man, if you get that happening, man, momentum just takes off from there. Yeah. It was a, a runway for you. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. No Thanks, doubt. Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah.